monkeys. Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy, Golden Golden Falls. Golden, what if, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back. I am back with what if Deku was trained by Kakashi Part 4. And uh, real quick, shout out to my boy Saint. Links are in description for the music. Um, we have merch, which I think I'm only going to have out for like the two weeks or so. Maybe I'll leave it out for longer. We'll see. But keep that in mind. I got merch down below and then um yeah that's about it i'm um i'm gonna i'm thinking i'm trying to figure out what uh what if movies or what if movie i want to do next um but i'm just kind of like pondering the idea currently at the moment so you'll be seeing one of those pretty soon um i'm not exactly sure when maybe just after we finish this series um, well, I'll, I'll obviously both of the series because I need to start a new series after I get these up and done with. But um, but yeah, that's about it. I'm not going to waste any more of your time and we're going to start exactly where we left off. Let's get it. Azuku and basically Shoto have started training every single day in terms of, well, well more like every single hour for the next two days. They train like crazy in terms of 1v1 sparring, Shoto's quirk control, at least over his fire, and um, yeah, that's about it. For those, obviously, those two days, that's all they do, and they see some substantial gains, and Endeavor realizes how effective a proper training and sparring partner is. And when the third day approaches, all three of them then head to Hosu City in search of the hero killer. But when they arrive, they arrive to something they did not expect. Tons of Nomus begin surrounding Hosu City. They begin terrorizing the citizens and also fighting the pro heroes. Endeavor tells them both to stay close, but Todoroki looks at something on his phone and goes sprinting away, telling Azuku to follow him. Azuku agrees and Endeavor tells them to not do anything stupid and they agree. So they run off, eventually running into a, an alleyway. Azuku looks and well, to see the hero killer Stain himself about to plunge his sword into one of his classmates. Quickly Shoto blasts some fire at him and Azuku gets two kunais out ready to fight. Damn, you really put us in a bad situation, Todoroki. Yeah, 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 I know. But I mean, he's one of our classmates, right? Azuku rolls his eyes and gets ready for a fight. Hmm, interesting. Two of you really want to fight? I just wanted him. Fake heroes taint society. And that's what that kid is doing. He's not even a real hero. Not even a pro. And he's seeking revenge. A real hero doesn't seek revenge. But that's what he's doing, right? And you two protecting the vengeful. It's funny, honestly. Very, very funny. But we'll find out soon what both of you are quickly made of. Let's see if you're hero material. Stain charges at both of them. And it's visibly obvious that Stain's speed outmatches both of them very easily. Azuku tries to fend him off and yes he can somewhat keep up with the combat prowess, prowess but it's still very difficult. Azuku is not, doesn't have a quirk. He's not almighty powerful because of a quirk. He trained every day to get to this strength and it feels like Stain is just like that but Ten times worse. Azuku realizes this and tries his best to keep up and tells Shoto that he needs to be able to basically stall Stain out. That's the only way they're gonna win. So Azuku summons a couple shadow clones 
and tries to preserve his chakra as best he can to stall the fight. He doesn't want to get slashed by Stain, knowing that if he does, the fight would be over very quickly. He is the only one currently able to actually uphold close range combat and Shoto is still getting a grasp on his fire. It wouldn't be easy for him to basically win on his own. So Azuku keeps this up. He tries to stall him out with shadow clones, but quickly they are dispelled. And eventually Stain gets to Azuku, but luckily Tenya Ida and the effect of the quirk that Stain has had worn, worn off. Tenya smacks Stain on the head with a kick and Azuku is able to kick him up and basically punch him into a wall. Stain's not out, but so aren't the heroes that are fighting. Ida and Azuku begin switching in and out, trying to basically keep Stain at bay the best they possibly can. And well, they're able to do this until a giant fire blast smashes into Stain, crashing him into the wall. And he and then after the fact that the big hulking man stands in front of Stain. It's Endeavor. Endeavor made the call and finally arrived, grabbing the head of Stain and smashing it back into the ground, throwing him out of the alleyway. Stain quickly regains his composure, but Endeavor is back on him like glue. Endeavor begins beating on Stain, smashing him into the ground once again, blasting him with fire. Eventually, Stain is out cold. The police then come over to basically arrest Stain, and Endeavor is holding him. But out of nowhere, Stain drops a knife out of his mouth, slicing Endeavor in the leg, licking some of his blood, paralyzing him. Stain backs up and screams that that is not enough to defeat him, and that some fake hero like Endeavor doesn't deserve the win against him, and that the only person that can beat him is All Might. But as he says this, his, well, rib cage begins to collapse, and Stain goes into shock and passes out. They realize that, well, his internal injuries may have stopped him, but his mental capabilities are far beyond the, anything that anyone has ever seen. So luckily, they're able to take Stain away, and Endeavor isn't seriously hurt by any means, and he takes the credit for basically defeating the hero killer and nobody gets in trouble. But unfortunately the internships are cut very short and they are forced to head back to the uh, to UA. When they arrive, Aizawa tells them that they all have about two days off, but then the real the real thing begins. They will begin their basically their final exams and other things like that. They'll have a written and a practical, so to be ready and to study hard. Two days then pass and they arrive finally to do their written portion, which is relatively easy for Azuku, but I mean, UA gets pretty hard in terms of academics because they're kind of ahead of the curve, you could say. Azuku then realizes that now it's time for the practical and he begins thinking about what that could mean will it be robots will it be the pro heroes will it be some training course will it be against the other students he's not sure but he walks over with his class and Aizawa is waiting with various other pro heroes and teachers I know what you guys are thinking why are all these pros and teachers here well, you all will be fighting in pairs against one of them. Let's talk about the fights. First off, we have two people going against me, your very own teacher. That's going to be Shoto Todoroki and Azuku Midoriya. Azuku asks why him when he doesn't even have a quirk. It wouldn't be suitable to fight Aizawa. Hmm, I don't know, kid. You interest me. I kind of want to beat you down. That, that doesn't sound like fun, Sensei, but okay. Aizawa then explains the rest of the, the, like, who people are facing, and then says 
that Bakugo and Momo will be fighting All Might. Azuku begins to think that that's kind of an unfair matchup, but there must be some underlying thing he's missing. And then, obviously, the fights go about normal. Um, obviously, All Might is the last fight, so Azuku and Shoto will be before that. They all head out into the city, and they begin planning. Todoroki and Azuku, well, have trained in combat with each other for basically two days straight before, and they sort of know each other's rhythms and paths and, and basically how each other fight. So this will definitely be helpful for them. They begin entering the city, and Azuku asks Shoto if he can just make small little icebergs as they walk. So small that you can't really track their trail, but just enough where we know if Aizawa is near. Todoroki agrees, and he begins doing this. He begins just offering steam out of off his body, or mist off his body, until they finally know where Aizawa is, eventually leading to him appearing. He cancels Todoroki's quirk, and Izuku steps up. Okay, let's see if a pro hero's training is better than mine. Aizawa kind of smirks at this, and then throws his scarf at Izuku. Azuku quickly grabs it, pulling him toward him, kicking Aizawa in the chest, sending him back. Azuku tells Todoroki to make a break for the exit, and that to put a giant wall of ice behind him when he gets to a certain point that they mapped out. Todoroki agrees and makes a run for it. Aizawa tries to stop him, but Azuku doesn't let him. Now, 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 you said you wanted to fight me, right? Let's see how good you are, Sensei. Aizawa smirks and they begin fighting. This is just pure hand-to-hand -hand combat. Who's better than who? Who's better at strategy? Who's better at fighting? There are no quirks in this. Not right now. Izuku summons a couple shadow clones in which Aizawa is able to read and get rid of them very quickly until Izuku's body begins to electrify. I just needed some time, Sensei. And you gave it to me. Azuku dashes at Aizawa at insane speeds, but the thing is, what did Kakashi tell him a long time ago about this technique, about, about the Chidori, and about, well, using this lightning-like techniques? When he dives straight at Aizawa, Aizawa quickly parries and punches Azuku straight across the face. This slightly electrifies Aizawa, but he's good enough to keep moving. And he makes a break for where Todoroki just was, but as he arrives, he sees a giant iceberg cutting him off. Damn, kid stalled me long enough. Nezu then comes on the intercom and says that Izuku Midoriya and Shoto Todoroki pass. Izuku stands up, kind of hurt, and he walks over to Aizawa. Yeah, you didn't beat me fast enough, Sensei. Yeah, 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 whatever, kid. You did good. They walk over, and finally, they watch All Might versus Bakugo and Momo. In which, Bakugo, well, they're able to win, but they're able to win via escape because of a plan that Momo came up with to slightly slow down All Might which worked out for the best and even though bakugo refused to just well pass he wanted to fight all might prove that he was stronger than him in which he obviously wasn't but luckily they were able to pass and well bakugo just would have to go to recovery girl more than anybody out of out of this time after one more day passes and well aizawa tells them that they will be going to a forest training camp and that, well, the people that didn't pass will be going with them still, but will have to take, well, other courses and classes while they are there. So they all head off. And when they arrive, they actually stop at a cliffside. And, well, Azuku has a bad feeling about this. Some of the students feel that, oh, maybe it could be just some sightseeing, and maybe they're just looking over the, the nice forest um, for now. 
but what they don't understand is that's definitely not why they are here. When they arrive, they're actually greeted by the Wild Wild Pussycats, who is who are have their own agency, and it's a relatively pop popular one. They're not a top-ranked group by any means, but they are sort of well-known. And they basically begin explaining who they are, and uh, they then see the bus for Class 1B go by them. Azuku's suspicions are now confirmed they're gonna get thrown off this mountain. They all begin to run, trying to run back to their bus, but unfortunately, the mountain begins to change and it throws them off the cliff. Azuku, while falling, sticks his kunai into the wall and then jumps off onto the ground. Aizawa leans over the cliff and screams, Yeah, make it to the camp by sundown. Or you don't get food. Yeah, good luck. Aizawa then walks away and the class is visibly frustrated and thinks that it could be pretty easy to travel through a forest until they see a giant monster and various others, one flying in the sky and many others scouring the lands. And that is where we're gonna leave this part off of, or part off. Um, if you enjoyed What If Deku Was Trained by Kakashi Part 4, make sure to leave a like, sub, all that good stuff. Comment down below any suggestions for future what ifs, stuff like that. Um, also, the next, the next part will be the finale. Um, I'm not gonna, that's all I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna say anything, spoilers, I, I have stuff planned for that next part, but the next part will be the finale. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and have an amazing day. Later.